Our scripture this morning brings us a verse from the Old Testament, from Psalm 139, and a scripture passage from the New Testament. Hear these words from the psalmist. God, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And our reading from Romans chapter 12, the first verse. This is from the message version, which is a little bit more contemporary. Paul writes to the church in Rome, and he tells the people, here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can offer God. May God bless the reading and the hearing of God's word. And our sermon hymn today is Take My Life and Let It Be. Alone by himself. 
and he tried to find safe outlets for expressing his feelings. And one thing that he found was helpful as a child was to use puppets, puppets with immovable mouths. They provided a safe way for him to communicate. And as I read that, I started thinking, if I could express my honest feelings and thoughts, and nobody knew that it was me because I was using a puppet, maybe I was hiding behind the pulpit or the lectern, and you couldn't see me, but I could express myself through a puppet, what would that be like? What would it be like to get to express yourself without worrying about whether or not you are pleasing other people or what they're going to think of you or how it's going to come across or whether that you won't have to worry that you're going to be judged because nobody will know it's you. It's, it's the puppet you're speaking through. Well, I love that idea. I would love to do that. But it's not a reality, and I'm not going to um, have that opportunity. I'd love to be able to do that as an adult. Mr. Rogers addressed the needs of children to be able to express their true feelings, their anger, their vulnerability, their fear. Um, what happens when our parents get divorced? Or what happens, what do we do with our feelings when someone dies? Or when we started a new school? Um, Fred Rogers dealt with prejudice and racism in the 60s. And he encouraged children to express their feelings, not in any old destructive way, but he encouraged parents to uh, in help their children express feelings in ways that weren't destructive, but honored the child. Fred Rogers worked hard to resist the temptation to be something other than he was. He was true to himself in his program, um, in what he taught. And one of the important parts of the neighborhood, Fred Rogers said, was knowing that feelings are all right. You know that you don't have to hide them and that there are ways that you can say how you feel that aren't going to hurt you or anybody else. And Fred said, and this was a 1994 interview, if there was a legacy that I would hope for the neighborhood passing on, that's certainly one of them. That you don't have to hide your feelings and that there are ways you can express them. When I was a child, in my family, feelings, expressing feelings was not okay. I was, um, I don't know if urge is the word, I was told my feelings weren't okay. And I was often ridiculed for feelings. I remember my dad sometimes saying, I can't believe you just said that. That's stupid. And when you're expressing a true feeling and someone tells you that feeling is stupid or why would you say that or I can't believe when they, when they belittle you and they shame you and they put you down, you start pushing those feelings down. And you, I started trying to read the mood of my parents so that I would be well, so that I wouldn't go through that, and also so that you know I wouldn't get in trouble, and I wouldn't do anything that might disrupt the the family. That was painful, and that was hard. And one thing I learned in my family growing up was. 
um, that the best thing you can do is read adults and try to get their approval. That would make your life go easier. And I learned how to be very compliant. Oh, you want me to do this? Okay, I will. You want me to do, well, I don't really want to do that, but I'm not going to tell them, yes, I'll do, I'll do that for you, I'll do that. And that just stuffs any real part of you deep down. And what emerges is um, what some psychologists call a false self, a self that accommodates others. A story in the Bible that seems to me to speak to that in a, in a helpful way is the story of Jesus and Zacchaeus, the rich tax collector who was Jewish, who collected taxes for the Roman government and made a whole lot of money doing that. It's a small passage. It says uh, from Luke 19 that Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through town, and a man named Zacchaeus a ruler, a leader among tax collectors, he was probably the top tax collector, was rich. It's interesting that that's how that whole passage starts. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, altitudinally challenged, I can relate to that, he couldn't see Jesus because of the crowd, but he wanted to so badly because he had heard of this man, Jesus. And there was something about him. He wanted to see him. Maybe not interact with him or talk to him. He just wanted to see him. So he climbed up a sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus, who was about to pass his way. And when Jesus came to the spot where Zacchaeus was up in that tree, Jesus looked up. This must have surprised the big Jesus out of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, come down at once. I want to stay in your home today. Oh my gosh, Jesus had told me that. I probably would have fainted on the floor. Zacchaeus wasn't looking to be seen or acknowledged, but Jesus saw him. He was seen by Jesus. Jesus knew him for all he was. So Zacchaeus came down, happy to welcome Jesus. And everybody else around, especially the Jewish people who Zacchaeus cheated in, out of their, their money um, to make himself comfortable, they grumbled, why is Jesus hanging out with this kind of tax collector guy who also happens to be one of us and who just blatantly cheats us? And Zacchaeus heard this, and he said to Jesus, it's like he had this sudden epiphany, and he said, Lord, I give half of my possessions to the poor. I think he meant, I will give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anyone, I will repay them four times as much as I've cheated them. And what was Jesus' answer? Today, salvation has come to your house. You are a son of Abraham. Salvation was about coming, turning around and recognizing your true self. That's one of the ways uh, I think that salvation is described in the New Testament. But it's, it's being known and not hiding yourself. I think this story is just so precious to me because Jesus is saying part of loving ourselves is to be real and to uncover um, those ways that we're trying to please others or make others think well of us, um, those parts that Keep us afraid, maybe. Keep us quiet. The parts of us that are fake. Because maybe I want to express my indignation or anger, but I don't want you to think badly of, of me, or I don't want you to get angry with me like my parents might have, 
Or most of all, I don't want you to abandon me. I don't want you to say, I never want to have anything more to do with you. So I present this fake self. And Zacchaeus, I think, in all of his insecurities, had a fake or false self. The scripture tells us right away he was short. I wonder how much bullying he got for that. And then we know that he cheated the people out of their money. He was so disliked. People could not tolerate him. They couldn't stand him. They hated him. And underneath all of that was the real person that God had created Zacchaeus to be. Only Zacchaeus had chosen to use the, the, the negative aspects of his gifts. It sounds like he was probably a good communicator, a good businessman. Um, but he chose to misuse those gifts to hurt others. He hid himself and maybe his insecurities as a you know, short person, whatever, below these, this fake self. And Jesus came along and says, I don't want you to be fake anymore. I see you. I know who you are. And I want you to be the best self that God created you to be. Jesus saw the true self in everybody else. Because Jesus was the only person I can think of who was always expressing and being his true self. Where do we find that true self? Where do we access that true self? Well, I think in coming to worship, in prayer and meditation, in being vulnerable with others. Those are places where we can practice being our true selves and find that we are known and loved by God and come to know and love ourselves. So one, one definition of salvation that comes to me from the story of Zacchaeus is the, that salvation is that uncovering and that coming to know that beloved true self that is fully me or that is fully you. Mr. Rogers talked about this a lot when he talked about helping children express their feelings, but doing it safely and constructively through puppets. Or Hillary might know this one, maybe she even does it herself. Mr. Rogers told children, if you're ever really, really angry and you need to express it and you're not sure how to, go to, if you have a piano handy, go to the piano and go down to the lower keys and Press down on them as hard as you can, as loud as you can. And that was a safe way to express anger. Do you ever do that, Hillary? I press the lower keys, but I have to use it to get the out, that's for sure. <laughs> Good. Well, and I'm sure you can play beautiful music or haunting music or angry music that helps deal with feelings. Fred Rogers wanted children to learn how to express their feelings and not be cut off from those feelings, not be shamed for those feelings. And I think God wants that for us too. God wants us to be real. And that's not easy when, as I have, you've learned to be compliant and to seek approval. So I'm going to keep working on that. And I invite you to work on that, too. And um, I have a, let's see if I can find where I, I put this little note. To my, oh, here it is. It's a spiritual practice of the week. And what I'm inviting you to do, and I'm going to do this week, and hopefully many weeks, is to welcome Jesus into the home of your faults, Self, your fake self, and tell Jesus about the person you are trying to become, or you hope to be, or the real you that you're hiding, the, the part of you that isn't real, that isn't you, but that's what you project out there, and ask Jesus to help you become 
who, true to yourself and who you really are. And I think the more we do that, the more we find delight and the more we find joy and the more we leave behind a sense of oppressive duty or obligation or anxiety or boredom or pressure, which sucks the life out of us. The more you try to be that fake self that you think people want or that you need for approval, the more it sucks the life out of you. So think about this week the way you might spend time with Jesus talking to him about your false self, your fake self, and then what, how you can get more in touch with your true self. Amen.